Morning all. Now we were talking about high current connectors on the YouTube comments the other day and uh, a lot of people were talking about Anderson connectors and it occurred to me I've got some Anderson connectors. They're these great big high current connectors on these UPS batteries. My mate John took these out of um, some UPS units at a school and they were done on a scheduled maintenance so of course the batteries are actually uh, still perfectly fine. They measure 13 volts. These are sets of two uh, 12 volt batteries in series and they've series them up with this 100 amp fuse at the back there. Um, so that's a 24 volt pack and I've got uh, two of these. Actually I've got four of them because there's two more down there. So what I thought I'd do is connect these two battery packs together. Shall I do that? Just for a laugh. There we are, two battery packs connected together. What's interesting about these connectors is that they're not like sort of regular polarized connectors because as you can see, black has connected to black and red to red. So all I've done is connected these four batteries in a series parallel arrangement. Now if they had been regular polarized connectors, I'd have had a 48 volt bomb on my hands, those wires wouldn't have lasted five seconds and the whole thing would have... Actually the fuses would have blown of course, wouldn't they? That's what would have happened. Now as I say, I've got four of these uh, XUPS battery packs, which means there are eight individual uh, 12 volt lead acid batteries. And these, as I say, were taken out on scheduled maintenance and they're dated November 2010. And as I say, they all measure about 13 volts a battery so I think they're in pretty good nick and what I'm going to do is put them in as replacements for my existing battery setup which is this mess really um, what this is is just a load of old car batteries now they've been here for I don't know about three years and they were all rejects duff batteries effectively uh, when I first got them, so they are now totally duff. I mean, one or two of them might be all right, but I just don't know. I'm going to have to go through each of them uh, individually with a tester to uh, try and work out which ones are good. So what I've got here is three feeds on the grey and white twin and earth cables, and then the two earth wires within those cables make up a third feed. They go into three of my own PWM5 charge controllers which are then paralleled at the top and then they go into the battery so that's what's charging the battery pack and then coming out the other side I've got well I've actually got this wire here this pair here which goes up to the 10 watt PIR floodlight um, which I can probably make come on if I th make it think it's dark no I can't make it dark enough because I recently put the uh, photo cell in there so that it doesn't come on in the daylight. And then the other wire is this pair here, which was the original wire. There's a fuse there. And that goes up here and actually through the window and in to that cigarette lighter distribution box that I showed the other day. So I think what I'll do is I'll take these batteries away keep the ones that are reasonably in good condition and replace it with these eight sealed lead acid 12 volts. I'll flip them all around, remove all the connectors, put them all in parallel and make one giant 12 volt battery pack. Now the grey and white twin and earths come along here, up here, across here. They actually run across the guttering here, all the way across there, up the fence and up to this tool shed here which has all the solar panels attached to it. All my old amorphous Maplin ones, there are four of the big 12 watters on the top and there are three 5 watt panels below. There's an 80 watt panel down on the grass, there's a 100 watt panel up on the fence and then coming out of the back of this tool shed 
are the grey and white twin and earths and they're all sort of wired up inside this box. And then also just on the lawn there's another 80 watt panel and this is the one I was using for the MPPT uh, experiments. That just runs along to another of the PWM5 charge controllers and into this big battery that uh, another friend gave me which is sitting in a wooden box. So it's just a huge hodgepodge of bits and bobs and it all needs a thorough overhaul. Oh and sort of lying around in the garden are various other bits. Another solar panel, a 20 watt, a couple of uh, old car batteries. I know these two have completely had it. I really need to take them down to the dump. So I think the plan is to keep some batteries on the wall outside my workshop, which is in there. Those will be the sealed lead acid batteries. So I'll have 12 volts um, directly accessible in the workshop. But also, with the remote battery set up in the garden, which is up here, what I was thinking of doing was having something like this, but a bit better organised, a panel and a battery, and then using a boost converter to raise the voltage up here in a waterproof box with a wireless remote control so that I can switch it on and off from the workshop, and then run some very low current wire with about 50 volts going down it all the way back and then using buck converters in the workshop to produce a couple of useful voltages like say 5 volts and 12 volts. That's kind of the plan. But when it's wet outside and it's cold, it's only about 5 degrees and it has been one of the rainiest winters on record this year, there just isn't much incentive to do anything out here. I'm just going to have to wait till it warms up a bit. Yeah, it's much nicer to be uh, inside in the warm, but I'll just have to struggle on with my uh, rather inadequate 12 volt power distribution system for the time being. And uh, the MPPT solar charge controller project just sits there hung on the wall next to uh, another solar panel. And uh, that's just going to have to wait until the weather improves.